I'm Rob LaCuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby. Welcome to our Gold Derby Breakthrough Performers Panel. And I'm here with Jude Hill, who stars as Buddy in Belfast. Gregory Diaz IV, who plays Sonny in In the Heights. And Daniel Ranieri, who plays young JR in The Tender Bar. Guys, thanks so much for joining me today. This is going to be a really fun group chat. My first question, which I'm going to direct to Gregory, is, so, you know, you're still up and coming in this industry. And what has been the best advice you've been given about working as an actor so far? Um, I would definitely have to say, while I was filming In the Heights, um, one of my co-stars, Stephanie Beatrice, um, we were just kind of sitting next to each other. We had just finished filming a scene and she just said, really soak this all in and really allow it, allow yourself to absorb this environment because it was truly a once in a lifetime experience to be surrounded by so many Latinx people, both on a screen and off the screen. And I've, I've really just kept that with me as I've continued to grow in my career. That's a really good answer because, you know, you're doing what you love to do and you've got to soak it in every day and just really like make the most of it while you're doing it. Um, what about you, Daniel? What's the best advice that you've been given so far in your very young career? The best advice that I've been given was when I was filming the set, um, one time me and George were just sitting next to each other and he told me, uh, when you're filming a scene, act like it's a real conversation, like you're talking in a real conversation, like with your parents or your friends. Don't like pretend like you're acting, like make it a real conversation. Yeah, that's a good one. Make it feel real, make it feel authentic. Um, that's excellent advice. Really good, good job, George. Uh, finally, Jude, what's the best advice you've been given so far? I think the best advice that was given to me by Kenneth Browner, the person who directs Belfast, is probably just you have to know the character before you perform the character and you have to know what they would do in the situation and what they're like. And as long as you understand the character, then you can act it beautifully. Yeah, good point. You need to be prepared. You need to be in the character's head, understand who they are. Good advice. Now I'm going to flip the, flip the switch a bit. So I'm going to stick with you, Jude. And I'm just wondering, I know a lot of young people, uh, boys and girls who really, really want to get into film industry. I know, for example, my own son, he's 11 and he, you know, does musical theatre classes and drama all weekend. And, you know, he does plays and he would love to, um, you know, know what, what is your advice, but what's the best way to get into acting and get into this kind of industry? What do you think, Jude? Well, I think that you just got to love acting and you got to love what you're doing. And if a self tip ever comes through, you have to love it and enjoy it. And don't be too serious at all times. Have some fun with it as well as hard work. And yeah, that'll get you far. Okay. I like it. I like that. What about you, Daniel? Um, you could probably... When you're filming a scene or when you're, if you get a scene or um, a script sent to you, you have to really understand the character and how, the, what the character's emotions are and how the character is acting and feeling. Because other than if you don't know what the character's emotions are, you're never going to like be good in the part or you're never going to get the part. Yeah, good point. You do need to, you just need to, you, you can't fake it. You got to actually try to figure out what the hell this character's doing. I like that. Finally, Gregory, what's your advice? You're a bit more experienced than the other two actors on this panel, and you've done, you know, Broadway and all other kinds of things. How did you get into this industry? What would you tell young actors who want to be like, just like you? Um, I would say, you know, of course, you really want to do it for yourself. And that being said, just stay really persistent. Um, if it's your dream, something that you want you know, you're doing it for you, go at it head first and don't give up and just, you know, be yourself. There, there's only one you out there and don't be afraid to ask questions because how else are we going to learn unless we're asking questions? Yeah. You know what? I'd say that to a lot of young people in any industry, like don't be too timid. Don't sit back and just wait, go for something, ask questions, be proactive. 
I like that. That's very good advice. Thank you all of you for that because I think young people watching this today will probably really want to cotton on to that and try to follow your lead. Um, let's move on to something a bit more practical. Um, obviously, you're all young and you're all still in school or in, in some way, shape or form. I'm curious, Gregory, um, is it difficult juggling school, regular life with your family and friends, being on set, rehearsals, pre-production? Talk us through that challenge. Yeah, um, it can definitely be a bit difficult at times. I'm a, a junior in high school right now. So, you know, I'm approaching that kind of more studious phase of, uh, you know, college and all that stuff. But you just kind of have to find a good balance or, you know, at least attempt to find that good balance between school and when you have to pr prioritize that, but also, you know, prioritizing your own happiness and, and when you have your free time. Yeah, in fact, I'll stick with you, Gregory. Do you find that sometimes you have to say no to stuff or you have to miss out on things because you're so busy on, on set or on stage? Um, sometimes, yes. And, and that kind of relates to the whole prioritizing thing. Um, you know, of course, it's always great to hang out with friends and stuff like that. But sometimes you just, you know, you may not be in the mood, one or two, you just have other things to do. You have to read a script. You have to get some schoolwork done. Because, um, I mean, at the end of the day, those are the two really important things, work and school. Um, and when you have that free time, it's always great to, you know, finally get out of the house. <laughs> I know, because, like, you're still kids. Like, you probably just want to chill out or play video games or go and play football or go and, you know, just hang out at a cafe. Um, and I imagine it would be really stressful. I also imagine it would probably be really helpful to have a really strong family unit around you, supporting you and friends. Do you feel that way, Daniel? What's the what's the challenge, especially given how young you are, to, to balance school and family and also working as an actor? It is pretty difficult because sometimes I gotta do my homework, I gotta do something for school. And if I get sent a script that has to be done on the weekdays, I'm in school. And if it's done at like five o'clock or something, I get it at school at 220. So I only have like an couple of hours to study the script and know it very well and then record it and send it to the people <laughs> and it, yeah. it's hard because sometimes I miss out on my homework I my homework goes in it's incomplete because I'm trying to actually build on my career on being an actor so I would rather kind of do the script than miss out like on a little homework yeah, I th exactly. That's what Gregory was saying. It's all about priorities, right? What's more important in the day? You don't want to miss school, of course, but you're given an opportunity to, to get a script read and, and maybe audition or read for the casting director. You know, that's important too. Um, Daniel, do you find that it's important to, to rely on your family and your, you know, and just so that you're getting through all the different priorities? Yes, it is great that you could play with your family. Uh not play, hang out with your family and spend some time with your family and have like dinners and you could, um, it is hard when you're filming, when you're trying to get a script done, but if you hang out with your family and you're juggling school, so it is very difficult. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it would be. It's difficult for regular kids who don't have this extra thing in their lives. So I can imagine it'd be way more difficult for you guys. Do you feel the same way, Jude? Are you finding it hard to, and challenging to balance everything? Well, on the set of Belfast, it was mostly across summer, meaning that um, I didn't have to do tutoring or any schoolwork for a large part of it. But some of it was in September, meaning that I had to do some tutoring on set. And so basically, I had a bunch of work from my school that they'd given to me before I went over to London to film Belfast. And all I had to do was get all that work done. And I still stayed in contact with my school friends. And I think that's also very, very important because you're still just a kid and yeah, you just live your life. That's right. You're, I mean, obviously you're working hard to be an actor in, in your career, but you are still a kid and you're just still a regular person and you want to hang out with your friends and, I think that's really important. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, so look, I have this 
uh, favorite question that I love to ask whenever I do these panels with all kinds of people, directors and composers and actors, I love to know what their favorite films are and their favorite performer or actor, something that's inspired them. You know, like we all had that when we were growing up. I love this film or even as an adult, I, I have some films that I've watched over and over again, right? They inspire me. So I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you think? I'm, I'm going to go to you first, Gregory. What is your favorite film or favorite actor? Someone or something that has inspired you and why? Um, I would say one of my favorite films is Toy Story. Um, I mean, it's just Toy Story. The first one, the first one is really great. Um, but I also, I really enjoy La La Land, you know, coming from that musical theater background and, and that mesh between dance and song, but also, you know, on screen. I really enjoy the musicality of it. Actor wise, um, I'm a really big fan of actors like Andrew Garfield and um, uh, Joaquin Phoenix, who, you know, he himself is Puerto Rican. So that's really inspiring to me. Um, he had an amazing performance in something like Joker. I don't know if you guys have seen that. It's a little bit darker. Maybe you shouldn't have. Um, but yeah, and and like inspiration wise, I, I think really, you know, of course I take inspiration from those people that I look up to, but it, it's mostly just, I've been very fortunate in my career to be surrounded by a lot of really amazing people and just, kind of taking that with me and and helping it to inspire myself you know this is really my dream and something that I really want and having that amazing support system from friends and family has really helped along the way yeah that's a really great answer we all have people that we look up to um and we all have our you know actor heroes um I certainly do I'm curious Daniel who are your what's your who's your favorite actor and what's your favorite film and why my favorite films are probably Marvel and yep. uh, Star Wars because they have a lot of action and I like when they have a lot of action. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite, some of my favorite actors are, like Gregory said, Joaquin Phoenix, um, people that play like Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, Ben Affleck. I, I get inspired by them. And I feel like with Joaquin Phoenix, when he, in his films, he gets so into the character that sometimes like if his character is like mean, like the Joker, he gets mean in real life. But like after the set, he's not mean anymore. Yeah. Joaquin Phoenix is, is a legend. Like, let's be honest. I totally agree. I think I've seen Joker like 10 times. And also, Daniel, I'm glad you mentioned Marvel. People who thumb their nose up to Marvel, I, I get a little cranky because we're a Marvel household. We've seen the whole series like four times. We're currently in the middle of Ragnarok. I have two kids and that's how we all get together and sit on the couch together. So I totally hear what you're saying. Marvel is fantastic. Now, Jude, what about you? What are your favorite films or favorite film and what's your, who's your favorite actor and why? Well, I'm a massive fan of the Marvel universe as well. And I've easily watched every single film at least eight times. Yes. And my favorite film is probably Avengers Endgame just because it had so many different plot twists and it was really well made. And I got to say, the actors that I sort of look up to are Tom Hiddleston and Robert Downey Jr. Because Robert Downey Jr. just plays the role Iron Man with such ease and he has a little bit of fun with it too. And that's very important. And he does an amazing job of playing him. Yeah, I agree. I totally love them. I think Tom Hiddleston's awesome as well. And um, I think Infinity War was better than Endgame, but that's okay. You can still love Endgame War. And, and, and as Gregory mentioned, La La Land is such an awesome film. Um, oh, how many times have we watched that? We listened to that in the car, the beautiful soundtrack uh, by Benj Passett. Um, okay, so thank you very much for those answers, guys. That was really interesting. Um, and I want to thank you for your time today. This has been a really interesting panel. Congratulations on your wonderful work and good luck this award season.